Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Retro Lectors. It's no secret that the Sega Dreamcast is my favorite console ever. I've done countless videos to discuss it, but what killed it? I'm here to discuss the possible reasons why the Sega Dreamcast demise was a short but painful one for the gaming industry as a whole. Stay tuned. Picture this, it was 1999, the end of the millennium. Y2K is an actual thing. The fear of all technology will come crashing to a halt and we as a civilization were afraid of the clock striking midnight on New Year's. The unknown looming over our heads. Was this part of the cause of Sega's failure? For several years, Sega perfected its most anticipated console, the Sega Dreamcast. They bet their farm on its success and finally of all the hype, the Sega Dreamcast was released in Japan November 27th, 1998, North America November 9th, 1999, Europe October 14th, 1999, Australia November 30th. 1999. But how can a console ahead of its time, as referred by its reviewers, with a built-in modem for the new online play, fail so miserably, causing Sega to withdraw from console manufacturing forever? Number 1. Shipping Issues the Sega Dreamcast was released in Japan on November 27, 1998. Shipping issues hindered its own domestic launch and set back Dreamcast due to poor planning. Before the North American launch, Sega had already reduced prices domestically in Japan and financial woes started weighing in. Number 2. PlayStation 2 Announced On March 2, 1999, Sony released highly publicized specs of the upcoming but yet to be confirmed new PlayStation console. Sony still owned 60% of market shares with the PlayStation 1. By releasing ahead of the PlayStation 2, Sega hoped that they would have a large enough install base to take market shares away from PlayStation. Number 3. EA's lack of support. Fast forward 10 months. Sega's new console is set to launch in North America in September 9th, 1999. Years of planning were put into motion. Another blow was delivered to Sega. EA, Electronic Arts, the largest video game publisher, announced that they will not develop games for the system. EA wanted exclusive rights to the sole sports brand on the Dreamcast, and Sega couldn't afford to have both EA and Visual Concepts, a company Sega paid $10 million to help make Sega sports titles. Number four online too soon. Years of couch co-op was a thing of the past in Sega's eyes. Focusing on an online platform where users can easily hop in and play someone from around the world was Sega's prediction for the future of gaming. Sega Net was a subscription service where the users played $21.95 monthly to have the ability to do such a thing. Unfortunately, many never adopted the same mindset. You ask how this was a mistake on Sega's part? It's not. The world was not ready for online gaming just yet, proving that Dreamcast was ahead of its time. The internet was still in its infancy and marketing something that not many people had access to just helped destroy it. Number five, GD-ROM versus DVD-ROM. To save costs, Sega opted for a format that they helped develop the GD-ROM. It was equally as costly as the then standard CD-ROM, but can hold up to one gig of RAM, whereas the CD-ROM option only held 650 megabytes of space. The choice between GD-ROM format rather than the more expensive DVD-ROM allowed users to easily copy games and play them on the unmodified Dreamcast, costing Sega millions due to the ease of accessing and copying games from a local rental stores like Blockbuster. The Sega Dreamcast was such an ambitious console for its time. From its early development stages, Sega literally put all its eggs in one basket. Understanding future trends was their inevitable downfall. Poor marketing and their focus on setting up for its own future, Sega never looked past itself to its competitors. The Dreamcast was voted the ninth best console of all time by IGN, and we can all unfortunately see their ambition and success was separate sides of the fence. Thank you, Sega, for trying to make us think.